Hello. It is me. Oh, sorry. I was thinking that was another video I was going to be doing. Um, it's not a strange paramilitary organisation. Um, it's me, the WB Blogger. And I've got a few uh, memories that I might start uh, telling people. Uh, back on the back in the day when we had football. Don't know if you remember those days. So just got my uh, um, mask on here for uh, making sure that I don't spread the coronavirus. But I think just because it's you and me, we can do without that. And right, I'm going to take down memory lane. And we're going to look at a time when, oh, Whitley Bay actually won a game in the FA Vars. Very, very exciting encounter. Uh, it took me, I went with uh, the boy Mark. Now, the boy Mark is a bit of a sidekick of mine. Um, he's called the boy because he's about five years younger than me. He's in his 40s, so he's still a boy compared to me. Ha ha. Um, and we, we took a trip, we took a trip to Thornaby, but uh, as the locals called it, Thoroughby. Saw that on their flag, uh, which uh, might be some photographs appearing so you can have a little look at them. And so we went to Thoroughby. Now, normally when me and uh, the boy Mark go on our journeys, we set a rule. Now the rule is 45 minutes travelling time, no more. So we had to go quite quickly down to Thoroughby, down on Teesside. Um, and we were, it was the second round of the FA Vars. Heady Heights for Whitley Bay. Modern day Whitley Bay, not that uh, Whitley Bay from the, the 2009 to 11 era. When we always are out the uh, FA Vars by the time the, uh, um, by the time the summer's gone. So we went, we went down to Thoroughby, it was the 11th of November, and we took a team, we had a very good goalkeeper, Tom Flynn, uh, Josh Neaney, Jack Walker, Peter Glenn Ravenhill, um, Noah Summers, and the professor organising everything, Ross Wilkinson. Uh, in midfield we had Tom Potter, uh, Liam Brooks, Andy Robertson, Alex Kempster, Matty Cornish, Subs, Cal Patton, Dan Lister, uh, Scott Jasper, Aidan Haley, and Monsieur Thibault Charmy. Uh, a bit of a favourite of mine because of, of my French connections. Anyway, so we headed down there. It took a little bit more than 45 minutes, but we ignore that. Uh, so the first next bit, uh, I don't know if anyone's been to Thornaby or Thoroughby, but first thing is you've got to head along a very, very, oh, it's a very overgrown track. It's quite a nice little nature reserve. I, I think it's along the sides of a railway line, might be. Anyway, so I'm going to do the, the next bit. I'm going to, I'm going to speak it as if I am David Attenborough. So, up a tree-lined narrow path we find the home of the variously spotted Thornabians. They mostly appear during the months from August to May, after which they return into hibernation or Spain during the hotter weather. Today we knew we would be greeted to great numbers of them as today was F.A. Vars Day, a special day for all the lower non-league species of football supporter. There was a great tension as amongst our group as we drew closer. We could hear the battle cry of the greater spotted and younger Thorabian. In time they would develop into the lesser spotted Thornabian, a calmer but nevertheless unpredictable creature. The Thornabian is a generally friendly creature that lives in various spots around their home in Teesdale Park. They are able to chat amiably about all aspects of Northern League football and are fiercely proud. Lesser spotted Thornabian can be found at their favourite watering hole. This can be reached through a long passage that allows it protection from the elements and any predators. 
Some Thornabians take advantage of a nearby picnic area to enjoy the fresh air and their version of water, called lager. Other Thornabians are shy, however, and prefer to watch from the safety of a high fence or a hill. The louder, greater spotted Thorabian, also known as Mad Boys, are quite happy to share their territory with visitors as long as they keep their distance. This all-male pack greatly enjoys showing off with a range of musical numbers they can recite. The greater spotted Thorabian then sometimes needs to be kept in check, and one of our research crew witnessed an apology to one of the Thornabian elders for a misdemeanour that could included the words I'm sorry, and it won't happen again. Generally, though, the younger members seem to be able to play about in their own shed that had been kitted out with creature comforts such as leather sofas. Maybe one of their number had put their feet on the sofas. That's what we surmised. The Thornabians jump and leap about, fueled by their own special brews. Forest Fruits Strongbow, that is sneaked in by one of their group through a secret door probably from a secret garden. For convenience, these are stored in a nearby receptacle, also known as a bin, to be surreptitious, surreptitiously removed when the elders are not looking. Fueled by their strongbows, the youngsters follow the commands of their leaders, who allowed the sacred megaphone. Their medleys seem to vary. If you aren't jumping, you aren't Thorna B. We hate Whitley Bay, and we hate Whitley Bay, amongst others. In this respect, they resemble the greatest spotted North Shields fan. This resemblance doesn't stop there, as both species favour the use of the Red Cross flag. Interestingly, when their team finds itself to be behind, to a shot from Andy Robertson, they still carry on with their patter, the power of fruity drinks. So, basically, Andy Robertson gave us the lead. Um, now, despite going ahead, the, the Bay were finding it quite hard going against a, a really determined home side. Um, and, and this really delighted the, the kids next to us. At one point, um, the, the Bay Denizen, Barry, the immortal Barry, decided to share his wisdom with these uh, young Thorabians. Um, but uh, he wasn't really appreciated. Sorry, Barry. Yet the team still struggled even after that. Um, and it was occasional pieces of good play. But we were really grateful to hear the halftime whistle because it really hadn't played very well. Uh, but we were ahead. And uh, that was the main thing. When the halftime whistle blows, it is a signal for the Thorabians to leave en masse for the toileting area, where, whereupon they mingle about, singing in the enclosed space, putting off those present from, the, from doing their business, before then returning to the safety of their shed. That was just a trip to the toilet, which was uh, quite off-putting as they were singing around you. It's a bit of time for concentration there. The second half started poorly for the Bay, again, uh, and it was no surprise when Thornaby equalised. Um, there was then when they scored, there was this massive pile on players and support near the corner flag, um, and they basically um, threw themselves upon Joe Hillaby, who was the goal scorer for, for Thornaby. When a goal has been scored, there follows a ritual in which the Thornaby goal scorer is rewarded by his fellow males jumping on top of him. This inspires the younger Thorabians to run from their shed to join in the growing, growing mountain of bodies. Didn't go down too well with the Whitley Bay fans. We were a bit sickened by that one, uh, but we could see it coming. Wasn't, uh, wasn't unusual to see us go, but, um, to concede goals, but anyway. Also, sadly, the, the Whitley Bay players, their body language didn't look good. A um, few days earlier, hadn't been such a good night. We, we'd lost on Tuesday night. Maybe that was coming back to haunt us. They suddenly started, the Whitley started playing some great football. Um, 
Cornish managed to force a save, a great save from the keeper before um, Jasper, Duracell Jasper, because uh, he never stops running, um, and Robbo combined for the for Robbo to thump a shot off the post. In between the strokes, however, uh, Josh Nearney um, and Alex Alex Kempster were substituted after needing treatment. It was looking ominous. Best striker and best defender off injured. With four minutes to go, it looked all over as Matthew Robinson took aim from distance and his strike eluded the fit again, Thomas Flynn's fingers. The repeated pylon seemed to feature over 30 bodies and added to the dejection we were feeling. Another defeat in the FA Vars. We managed to get all the way to the FA Vars second round, but was this gonna be it? So, uh, we decided to try and encourage the team with a few away of the beer chance. Um, and that was, that was, that was uh, quite, quite an achievement for those days. It's not the days of the, uh, of the bell end choir anymore. There's just a few guys behind the, behind the, uh, behind the goal. Um, one of them was Kinnan. Um, and, and he promised that if we scored a winner, he would sing, if you don't jump, then you're not Whitley Bay. Um, but the chances of that were looking bleak. But when you needed a miracle, who can you call? The prof. Professor Wilkinson himself. So, Matty Cornish's shot was spilled by the Thornaby goalkeeper. Lo and behold, there was the professor to bundle home the equaliser. It was shields all over again, but this time in our favour. We'd equalise right at the death. The Thornabians Thorabians were silent. We were delighted. Extra time it was, for the second time in five days. Last time it had been North Shields. This time it was Thornaby. Whatever Nashi had said it worked. The team were completely changed in extra time. Their passing was crisp to feet. There was a spring in every yellow bay player's step. It seemed logical but we didn't dare dream that the Bay should take the lead, and they did. It was the Bay's Duracell bunny, Scott Jasper, who slid out in at the far post to connect, right in front of the Thorabian kids. Heaven was indeed a place on earth, and for that half hour, and for us, it was heaven in Thornaby. The icing on the cake was provided by the super sub, Kyle Patton. Come on, God. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't jump, then you're not Whitley Bay. Hey! If you don't jump, then you're not Whitley Bay. Hey! If you don't jump, then you're not Whitley Bay. Hey! If you don't jump, then you're not Whitley Bay. Hey! Sheer magic from Potter led to a ball whizzing in, and Cal Patton diverted it home. Amazing. 4 2, Whitley Bay winning away in the FA Vars. Fantastic. So. There was more reward after the 45 minute drive home, 45 minutes of course, uh, I decided to um, pop to the uh, local takeaway in, uh, in Whitley Bay and, and get a typical teesside delicacy, a chicken parmo from uh, Arus Beirut um, on Whitley Road. Marvellous. It was uh, rather appropriate and tasty. Wonder if I'll get a free one for that plug. Anyway, so we'd lost to Shields in the middle of the week, but we were now in the draw for the third round of the FA Vars. Final bit um, is just a little bit of a closing statement from our favourite animal expert. Anyway, and so it was that the Thornabians and Thorabians returned to their dwellings in a bewildered and disappointed manner, back along the dark path they had wandered earlier with such hope and excitement. A hard lesson had been learnt. How will there be? Yes. <laughs>